Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this particle effect animation using DaVinci Resolve 16. Okay, so I have DaVinci Resolve 16 loaded up here. So like usual, the first thing we do is create a new project down here. We'll click new project. And inside here, we need to give the project a name. So we're going to call it particle effects demo and we'll click create button we'll now be presented with DaVinci Resolve and as default it takes us into the cut tab here at the bottom cut we want to go over to media okay so we need to download a picture to put inside DaVinci Resolve to create this particle effect and we're going to click on the web browser and go to Pixabay so this particular picture I'm downloading I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description I suggest you use this one in this tutorial then you can repeat this process with a different picture afterwards try and find something that's sort of this shape on a landscape let's click free download and we're going to download 1920 by 1280 let's click download so we've got the picture here let's just move this to the side and minimize this and inside this folder I'm just going to drag that picture into this folder so we've got the picture in here now what we need to do is really resize this picture because it's going to be a little bit too wide or a little bit too tall so let's check its properties and we want it to be exactly 1920 by 1080 so we need to do a quick edit on this picture okay to edit the picture we can either use photoshop or gimp in this tutorial i'm going to use gimp because it's free software so anyone can access this software gimp and we're just going to drag this picture in here and just slightly resize it quickly so the first thing we'll do is just go to file new and it's 1920 by 1080 so we need to type 1920 by 1080 click here and then set the dpi to 72 so it'll be 72 here and then fill with transparency here fill with transparency click ok and this is our blank canvas um, let's go ahead and open up this folder and we're just going to drag and drop the picture into GIMP and then just use the um, control key just to zoom out a little bit that's the correct width but we just want to um, really crop out this top or the bottom we have to decide where we want to crop so let's just use the move tool click on the move tool click on the picture then you can hold down the shift key and the arrows on your keyboard holding down the shift key you can move either the image up or you can move it down I think I'm gonna leave it pretty much centered like this I think this looks pretty good maybe we can move it slightly something like this I think this is fine so anything at the top here and the bottom here will get cut out on this image let's go to file export export as and we'll go to my desktop inside this folder we're going to save this image we want to save it as a JPEG file uh, PNG should actually be okay <clears throat> let's just save it as a PNG it'll be a bit, a bit higher quality image and we'll just call this um, let's just call it face-01.png and we'll click export We'll leave all the settings as they are and we'll click export and if we close down gimp now and we just discard the changes inside our folder we've got this new file which is the uh, png file right at the right width and height 1920 by 1080 because the video clip that we'll create will be 1920 by 1080 okay let's open up the folder on my desktop we need this open and let's go ahead and open up <coughs> davinci resolve again and what I normally do is take the picture that I've created and just drag and drop it into the folder section here. And that's going to go and find that particular folder with all of its assets, right? So this is a quick way to find that folder uh, on my desktop uh, within DaVinci Resolve. So you can see the, the subfolder and all the, all the other information. Let's take this PNG file and drag it into the media pool. Only this image we need inside the media pool. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the edit tab here. Edit. And the first thing we want to do is drag this image into the timeline. Let's drag that image into the timeline here. And we want this image to be two second duration. So let's scrub back to here. And in the, uh, as you're scrubbing back, you should see the timeline there. We want to move it to uh, two second duration, which will be right here. That will be two seconds, right? And next we want to go to, make sure the effects tab is open here, effects library. And then in the toolbox here, you want to go to effects here and drag the fusion composition into the timeline as well. So we've got two elements here. We've got the image, the still image, and we've got this fusion composition. This fusion composition, we want to create it or drag it across till it gets to nine seconds. So nine seconds would be right here, around here, or exactly here. 
that would be nine seconds. Let's click on this fusion composition and go to the fusion tab down here. Okay, so in the fusion composition here, the editor, you'll see there's the still image, this first image, and you'll also see this blank square, which is the fusion clip. So let's click on that, click on this clip here, and then you'll see media out. So this is the output, and we need an import. So we're gonna take the picture of the face, this one, not the timeline, this image here, and drag and drop it into the editor here, the node editor. So we've got media in and we've got media out now. So we want to see the input and we also want to see the output. So let's click, when you roll over this media in, there's a little sort of section down here. You can see on this one, it's ticked on the right hand side. There's a little white dot here. On this one, we want to tick the left hand side because you've got two video editors up here or you've got two display monitors. Think of them like display monitors. There's a left one for the input and there'll be a right one for the output. Now we want to create particles. So we're going to right click on the node editor here, down here, right click, go to add tool, go to particles here, and we want to create a particle image emitter here. So let's left click and that will add that node in. And then we want to right click one more time, go to add tools, go to particles. And this time we're going to select the render, the particle render. We want to render out these particles. So let's select that one as well. And we just need to connect these together now. So let's connect the media in to the particle emitter, the particle emitter to the render, and then the render to the media out. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the particle image emitter here. When we click on that, there's some settings here. You need to make sure the inspector is turned on here. So click on it, it'll go white, and you'll see all of the options. It's a bit like a properties, you can think of it. So in the X and the Y, I want to set these values to 0.5. And in here, I also want to set it to 0.5. This will just reduce the density of the the particles being emitted here, right? It looks a bit rubbish, we'll fix that. Um, <clears throat> inside here, we have the option to go to style. So let's click on style. At the moment, it's set to points, and we want to set it to blobs here, blob. And inside the size control here, let's expand this and set the size all the way to the top. Now you can see the image quite clearly, right? If you see them side by side, this is quite clear now. Uh, let's go back to the controls here. And we need to set up some options in here. So in the velocity, think of it as velocity as like speed. How fast are these particles moving? And this you can really experiment with. This will affect how these particles move and how fast they move. So the velocity here, I'm going to give it a value of 0. Let's see. Let's give it a, let's try 0. 0.0. 95 this this value seemed to work well for me when I was creating this animation sequence the velocity variance I'm going to set that this is like the variance of how these particles will travel I'm going to give that a small value of like 0 0.1 now if you notice the the render over here in the output is changing so if I go to something like frame 60 this green line will start to move across and it's rendering out the particles. Now, right now, these particles, if you've ever used Blender, think of it a bit like the wind object, right? Or the, um, the wind force field is pushing the particles to the right hand side from left to right. You can see they're getting pushed to this direction. We don't really want that. We want them to be pushed towards the camera. So think there's a camera in front of this, um, this output and we want to push the cut particles towards the camera. To do that on the angle, the angle, the Z angle here, we're going to set that value to minus 90. So that will push the particles towards the camera now. So now they're getting pushed towards the camera. They're going to fill out the camera viewport, right? Um, the other thing we want to do is click on the particle render. And inside here, um, we want to kill the particles. So kill particles that leave the view. So when these particles get pushed towards the camera, some of them are going to go off the screen. And when they go off the screen, we no longer need to track those particles where they're moving because they'll never appear back on the screen. So we can kill them off, basically. Uh, we should turn these other options on as well. We should just turn all three of these options on, basically. Let's go back to the particle emitter. Now, normally what we want to check is how many particles are showing towards the end of the render. So if we click around, let's say, frame 180, so I'm just left clicking here on frame 180. You need to wait for it to buffer, right? And, and um, um, finish the rendering here. You can see on frame 180, it's blank. And we really want to still see some particles here, right? So if we go to like frame 130, we should see some particles still in the, in the sequence. Let's just check that. 
okay we don't really see anything here either so let's go to the lifespan and this is the lifespan of the particle how long did they live for and we can increase this value so let's just set it all the way to the top and we should see some particles now so here we can see some particles being rendered and let's go to around frame 190 and we can still see you might not be able to see it too well on my screen but i can still see a few particles let's just go closer to frame 200 and we can still see a handful of particles but as we get closer to the end of the the animation we, the particles are going to disappear so you can experiment with this velocity here increase or decrease the value to determine how many particles will get shown towards the end but really we want all the particles to disappear before we finish off the um, the the animation sequence right we don't want particles to still be seen on the screen now let's go back to the edit us so we're pretty much done here if we go back to the edit here and what we're going to do is just do a little overlap of these two clips so let's drag the image above and what we want to do is just drag this this clip here backwards a little bit so we want to move it to uh, one second here one second we're going to do like an overlap of one maybe about maybe less than that let's do um let's see let's move this timeline out of the way so here is on two seconds so we're going to move it back actually this is uh let's see yeah, we're just going to move this this will be two second duration this uh image so we want to move it back to around this will be one second so let's move it forward a little bit um just slightly over one second we want a little cross dissolve here well not cross dissolve but we want to fade the image off as these particles get emitted so i'm going to just fade this off here let's say around 15 frames something like this there's less than a second something like this if we click on our timeline around here we should see the image and as that image uh, as these particles start to get emitted the image that's on top is going to fade away and then the particles will show through below that's kind of the the idea behind it now the one issue we're going to have is if we scrub through the timeline let's get towards the end you'll notice that you've got to wait for the frame to render because what davinci resolve is doing is it's, it's um it's basically looking at these particles where they're going to be appearing on the screen so we've got two options either we can um, do this transition and have the particles on a black background or we can put them onto a white background and because the main image itself really contains a lot of white in it right we can see when we're looking at this this image here if we move back across the timeline it takes a few seconds to update we can see there's a white background so what I would like to do is also put a white background underneath this fusion clip so that um, when we get to our very last frame we'll be on a white frame rather than a black frame so i'm pretty sure there's some easy ways to do this davinci resolve but you know the way that i'm going to do this is just open up the simple way to do this really just open up gimp software and we just create a 1920 by 1080 image with a white background so let's click file new um the, the easy way to do this actually is go to the foreground here and set it to white set it to a white color so click on that top tab there and just set it to a white color top left hand corner there will be white then we can go to file new it's already 1920 by 1080 we'll click advanced and set it to 72 dpi you can do this in photoshop as well if you want and then we want fill with uh, we'd actually we, we could done, done fill with foreground color which is white but there's also an option in here, I don't remember. There's also an option here to fill it with white anyway. So either one, foreground or white will be would work. So let's just click white anyway, which is the equivalent of that foreground color there. We'll click OK. And we just got a white background. Let's go to File, um, Export As. And we'll go back to my desktop, go into here. And we just save it as a PNG file. And we just call it white BG, white background. Let's click Export. And then export that image and we can close that gimp now and if we go back to our media pool here uh, we can see the white background here the png so let's drag that into the media content down here right okay let's go back to the edit tab here and we want to make a space below the fusion clip this fusion composition so let's left click on the image first hold down the shift key and then select the fusion composition they'll both be highlighted then you can drag this up one Let's just literally just drag it up one. So there's a space now. When you use your mouse wheel to move downwards, you'll see there's a space here, right? So you've got the video three, which is the image, 
video two, which is the fusion composition, and now you've got video one, which is a blank space below. Now we can take the white background and drag it underneath the fusion composition. And we can drag across to snap it to the end. Now that video will have a white background rather than the black one. So if we move across the timeline to around this position, and remember, DaVinci Resolve, when you move to that point in the timeline, DaVinci Resolve is working out the particles for that particular frame. So you have to be a bit patient, and then you'll see the white background with the particles. I think that's going to look better rather than transitioning into a black background. But this is, again, entirely your choice. If you want a black background, just don't do this step here, or maybe make both of them and see which one you prefer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the Deliver tab here. And when we click on Deliver, we've got some few options in here to start this render. Normally, I move the mouse cursor or the timeline right to the beginning um, of the composition here, right? Move it to the beginning. That's normally what I would do. And then in the options up here, I'm going to select H264, this option here. In the format, I'm going to set it to, uh, let's see, we want to set it to MP4. In the drop down everything else you can pretty much leave the same the only other thing we do is give it a file name so let's just call this particles um, let's call it particle effect dash zero one and then the location let's click browse and we're just going to save this let's go to my desktop go to the folder we're going to save it in the same folder where i've saved the images and stuff right and it's got the file name there with mp4 right then let's click save after you click save you need to click add to render queue here when you click that it will add that job it's called, called job one and it will be a job for this software to complete all you need to do is click on the start render and this is going to take a little bit of time because remember davinci resolve has got to work out where all of those particles are going to be positioned uh, for each individual frame. So I'm going to click the start render and then we'll pause this video and check the video clip at the end. Okay, so DaVinci Resolve has finished rendering out all of the frames. It didn't take that long, around five minutes. If I minimize this and open up the folder on my desktop, we'll see the new video clip in here. Let's open it and see what it looks like. Okay, so overall I think it looks pretty good. Let's pause this. If I was to improve this in any way, um, probably the transition between the image fading out and the particles getting emitted, you can kind of still see the outline of the finger here from the transition of the image to the particles moving forward, right? So I would have probably reduced that transition or the fade between the two. Apart from that, I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know, it's quite an interesting effect uh, to, <clears throat> to, to create this in um, DaVinci Resolve. I think the still image at the beginning is a wise thing to do. So these people <clears throat> or anyone viewing this video gets a bit of time to understand this image because if you start off with a particle straight away, maybe <clears throat> maybe it's a bit too quick. So let's close this. Let's actually close this clip. The one thing I will probably do is go back to DaVinci Resolve, go back to the timeline and this uh, crossfade here, this crossfade, I would have reduced it made it a lot smaller and maybe reduce the overlap as well so you can grab the composition and you can just drag it across a little bit more and get that that clip to um cross fade or fade out a lot quicker uh, it's, it was fading out 15 frames before so maybe around five or six frames would be better for the cross fade at that point in time and just move the composition clip across you can turn off this snapping tool and then you can move it on frames, right? You can move it quite accurately, let's say. Okay, let's minimize this. I hope you find that tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.